Hi, welcome to Personal Protective Equipment Awareness video presentation. Personal Protective Equipment, PPE. All clothing and other work accessories that provide a barrier against workplace hazards. Before PPE is used, a risk impact assessment should be performed to determine the level of protection needed and the types of hazards present in the function to be performed. This evaluation can be in the form of a job safety analysis or a risk impact assessment. There is no single combination of personal protective equipment that satisfies the needs of every situation. Therefore, before beginning any operation, you should perform or review the risk impact assessment or job safety analysis for the particular operation to determine what PPE is required. Then perform a head-to-toe check to ensure that you have the appropriate PPE and are wearing it properly. PPE is used to protect you from the following physical hazards associated with your work. Mechanical hazards such as moving equipment and machinery. Environmental hazards such as noise, light radiation, flying debris or objects, hazardous vapors or other respiratory hazards and chemical hazards they include protection of the head including eyes and ears the torso arms hands and feet the following subjects will be discussed types of personal protective equipment when PPE is required how to select the proper type of PPE for the job how to wear PPE and proper care and maintenance of PPE. Head protection, eye protection, hearing protection, torso protective clothing, respiratory protection, gloves, and boots. Head injuries can be caused by falling or flying objects or by bumping the head against a fixed object. Policies require that hard hats be worn at all times on the well site unless you are inside buildings or vehicles. They are also to be worn any other time the potential for head injury exists. Some examples of when hard hats are required are working with or near cranes or crane trucks, loading or unloading trucks, working on or preparing units, masts, and dog houses for shipment, working at or near test pit masts. Hard hats are designed with adjustable headbands that allow the wearer to adjust the band to the proper fit. Hard hats should be worn with the bill facing forward. When the headband is adjusted properly, it provides sufficient clearance between the shell and the headband and provides for a snug fit on the wearer. The headband is fitted with a removable or replaceable sweatband that covers the forehead of the wearer. The hard shell of the hat resists impact of falling or flying objects and the headband and sweatband form the impact absorbing suspension. Due to the importance of this combination, both the shell and the headband must be routinely inspected and maintained. Hard hats should be inspected for cracks, even hairline cracks, before each use. They should also be inspected for any signs of impact, rough treatment, or wear that could affect their ability to provide the level of protection for which they are designed. Hard hats that show signs of impact, cracking, chalking, or loss of surface gloss should be discarded. Since the suspension plays such an important role in absorbing impacts, close inspection of the hat harness is also important. Always look for loose straps, rivets, broken straps, broken or defective lugs, and any other defects. Since sunlight and heat can adversely affect the degree of protection a hard hat provides, hats should not be carried on the rear window shelf of a vehicle. Also, if the driver is required to make a sudden stop, the hat can become a dangerous projectile to the occupants of the vehicle. At least once every month, hard hats should be cleaned with a warm soapy water. Removal of oil, tar, or paint from the hat may require the use of a solvent, but because solvents can be harmful to the shell, use only solvents that are recommended by the manufacturer of the hat. Also, paints can contain solvents that could damage the dielectric properties of the hat, so paint should never be applied to hard hats. If a particular color hat is required, it should be purchased. Eye and face protection is required in any situations where there is a potential for injury to the eyes or face. The first step in determining the proper type of eye protection to use is to identify the hazards in the workplace. Flying particles, hazardous chemicals, light radiation, molten metal and combinations of the above. The type of eye and face protection you use must provide adequate protection for the particular hazard. Be reasonably comfortable. 
fit properly without interfering with your movement or vision. Be durable. Be easily cleaned and disinfected. Provide safety glasses meeting the appropriate government standards to all employees working in areas where safety glasses are required. These standards specify the lens type and thickness as well as frame construction. These factors enable safety glasses to withstand higher impacts than normal glasses. Remember that just because your glasses lenses are made using safety glass, they may not necessarily meet the requirements for approved safety glasses. Only approved safety eyewear meeting the above mentioned standards may be worn in eye protection areas. Eye protection areas include, but are not limited to, areas of well site operations, grinding operations, power tool operation, hammering and chiseling, soldering, etc. It is important to remember that safety glasses provide only limited protection and should be used in conjunction with goggles when dispensing hazardous liquids and with a face shield when performing sanding or grinding operations. Safety goggles should be used when working with or around liquids or flying dust. Safety glasses, even when equipped with side shields, will not provide adequate protection in these situations. Goggles can, however, be used in conjunction with vision correcting safety glasses or can be equipped with corrective lenses. Some goggles are equipped with perforated sides which aid in ventilation, but these are not suitable for dispensing or working with hazardous liquids or chemicals or in areas where vapors present an eye hazard. There are goggles available that are equipped with indirect ventilation, which is suitable for protection against chemical splashes. Only goggles with solid side shields or indirect ventilation may be used when working with hazardous liquids or chemicals. In order to provide the widest field of vision, goggles should be fitted as close to the eyes as possible without the eyelashes coming into contact with the lenses. Proper maintenance of protective eyewear is an important factor in ensuring adequate performance. Safety glasses should be given the same care as your own glasses because the frame, nose piece, and temples can be damaged from rough use. Safety glasses and goggles should be kept in a case when not in use. There are cleaning and defogging solutions available for use with goggles. These solutions should be kept available at the location to ensure that goggles are kept in good condition. Always inspect glasses and goggles before use. Pitted or dirty lenses affect your ability to see properly and can cause eye strain. Worn out headbands do not hold the protector in the proper position. Full face protection is often required to protect against chemical splashes, molten metals, and flying debris. Face protection is provided by the use of a face shield, and as a general rule, face shields should be worn in conjunction with some type of more primary eye protection, such as safety glasses or goggles. Face shields serve to protect the face and neck from hazards such as flying particles and debris, hazardous chemicals, hot or molten metals, among other things. They can also be used for anti-glare protection, such as in welding operations. Face shields should be shaped to cover the entire face and are available to fit over a hard hat or to wear directly over the head. They should be supported from a headband or harness to allow them to be tipped back easily. The headband or harness should fit snug enough to prevent shifting. Face shields used in welding operations must have the proper shaded lens for protection from radiant and ultraviolet light. During all operations requiring safety eye and face wear, you must remain aware of the positions of other people. What you do may have an effect on the safety of others. Exposure to loud noises can cause both temporary and permanent hearing loss. Due to the importance of hearing conservation and the different types of noise control and protection devices, there are many hazards that can injure the torso. Examples of these hazards include heat, splashes of chemicals, cuts, and radiation. A variety of protective clothing is available including vests, jackets, aprons, coveralls, and full body suits. It provides coveralls for employees working in field locations on a basis determined by local management. The coveralls are made of fire resistant material which usually consists of treated cotton. There are some operations, however, that require the use of fire retardant clothing, such as Nomex. There are advantages and disadvantages to each of these materials, so check with local management to determine the type of coveralls required for your particular working area or operation. When is fire retardant clothing, FRC, required? FRC should be worn whenever the risk impact assessment, client, or legal requirements dictate. 
How must FRC be worn? FRC should always be worn as the topmost layer of clothing. Wearing of non-FRC jackets or other items would negate the effectiveness of FRC. What are the limitations of FRC? FRC is required to be able to withstand a direct flame for a minimum of three seconds in FPA 2112. The wearing of FRC does not give you unlimited time. Evacuate the area as quickly as possible. How should I care for FRC? Launder the FRC per instructions provided by the clothing manufacturer. Never use chlorine bleach to wash FRC as this may remove the fire retardant protection of the material. Always wash FRC alone as washing with other clothing could cause it to pick up lint which could burn when exposed to a flame. Any rips or tears should be repaired with fire retardant thread or patching materials. Use of non-fire retardant synthetic or cotton threads and materials would reduce the effectiveness of the FRC. When working with caustics or acids, aprons or chemical resistant suits should be worn. Provide adequate arm protection, but there are situations where a higher level of protection may be required. One of these situations, the use of hazardous chemicals, was discussed in the previous section. In some areas, depending on conditions, arm protection is required to protect you from ultraviolet light from sunlight. In these cases, coveralls or long sleeve shirts will usually be adequate. Welding operations frequently require the use of arm leathers or work vests to protect the arm from the hazards associated with welding, such as radiant heat, ultraviolet light, and hot metals. The first line of defense against hazards to the hand is the use of protective gloves. Gloves are probably the most commonly used type of personal protective equipment. It is important that the glove you choose be matched to the type of work you are to perform. The type of material a glove is made of depends on the type of work for which the glove is intended. For most types of work, cotton or canvas gloves provide satisfactory protection. For more abrasive or rough materials, leather gloves are required. For activities involving handling tools or materials with sharp edges, metal mesh, Kevlar or cut resistant plastic gloves are recommended. Examples of environmental hazards to the hand include exposure to extreme temperatures, electricity, light radiation, or materials handling. These hazards require the use of specially designed gloves that provide the proper type of protection from the particular hazard. For instance, special rubber gloves or insulating lineman's gloves are designed to protect and insulate against electrical shock. Leather can be used to protect against light radiation, and insulated gloves made of specialized insulating materials are required for protection against temperature extremes. For example, work involving potential exposure to a hazardous substance or chemical may require rubber, vinyl, neoprene, or nitrile gloves. Before working with a chemical, always review the material safety data sheet to determine the appropriate type of glove to be used with the particular chemical. Replace gloves on a regular schedule to avoid chemical breakthrough. Always inspect your gloves prior to use for tears, holes, or other damage. If you are unsure about the type of glove to be worn for your particular job duties, ask your supervisor or the appropriate safety manager for assistance in making the choice. Once you have determined what type of glove to wear, it is important to wear gloves that fit properly. Gloves that are too small can tire your hands and restrict movement, and gloves that are too large can be too cumbersome to work in. Be sure your gloves fit properly. Gloves should not be worn when working on moving machinery such as drills, saws, grinders, or other rotating or moving equipment that can catch the glove and pull your hand into the machinery. It requires that protective footwear be worn any time the potential for foot injury exists. Your feet are vulnerable to a variety of different types of injuries, but most foot injuries are caused by sharp or heavy objects falling on or rolling over the foot. Some other foot hazards include punctures, electricity, slipping, chemicals, and extreme temperatures. There are many types of safety shoes intended for the different types of hazards. Shoes equipped with steel insoles help protect against puncture wounds and metatarsal guards are available to protect the upper foot from impacts in areas where additional upper foot protection is needed. 
Rubber or plastic safety boots protect against exposure to hazardous chemicals or oils and should be equipped with a steel toe guard to protect against toe and foot injuries. Be sure the safety shoe you wear meets the appropriate standard and is the proper shoe or boot for the hazard. Also, comfort is important. Be sure that the shoe you purchase fits properly and gives you the proper level of comfort, ankle support, and slip resistance. Rubber provides a natural resistance against slippage. Because of its molecular makeup, the higher the carbon content of the rubber, the greater the slip resistance and the longer the wearing period of the shoe. Remember that clean shoes enhance slip resistance. Shoes should be cleaned off at least once a day, no matter what type of sole the shoe has or the work environment. Also, there are new developments in self-cleaning lug soles designed to help drop off mud and snow as the employee walks. Remember, PPE is your last layer of defense to protect you from untoward incident. Thank you and stay safe.